Hi there, Sam Gossner here with Versilian Studios, and I'm going to be showing you how you can turn the raw samples in Versilian Studios Chamber Orchestra Community Edition into working instruments using the SFZ format. So, the first step in creating an SFZ file is understanding a bit of the syntax. So every time we want to add a sample, we need to add a new region that will contain that sample. We can do this by doing an open bracket like so, typing region, and then a close. Now, the sorts of information we need to contain in here are what the sample is, what key or pitch it is, the range of keys and pitches it can take up, and then finally the velocity or volume it is, the range of that. And then of course we can contain a number of different other elements called opcodes, which help to better define the performance of the sample. And those you can find a whole list of them and additional details in the description below. But today we're going to start off with the basics. So first, let's uh, figure out our sample. So I've created this new text file and I've named it flute.sfc and I've put in my first region tag. But first we need to save this. So I've gone ahead and I've placed it inside our library here. So I put it right in the folder where the flute samples are, just for simplicity. Uh, and I've titled it flute.sfc. You can see it right there. So you can, you know, normally it would be trying to make a .txt file, but you could just do flute. flute.sfc, and it'll work. And now all we have to do is start entering our notes. So one important thing to keep in mind is that the notation given here is actually what's referred to as Japanese pitch notation which means C3 is middle C, which is 60. So just uh, to make things a little easier, I'll start with C3. So enter a sample. We do sample equals. Then we put the full name of the sample. So uh, here, let's just insert the loud sample just for now. So you can see there are multiple different components to, the, to each of these sample names. So the first part is describing the instrument. So this is a flute. Those are the player's initials right there to keep everything uh, organized in the back end. And then the articulation, the key center, the velocity layer, which volume it is. So th this is pitch information. This is velocity information. And finally, an indicator for the number of round robin, which we won't be using, as there are no round robins here. So we enter our sample, and then we enter our low, our low key range. So we do low key. You don't do the W in the low, just LO. Uh, and let's see. So let's say we, if our pitch key center is 60, let's say we stretch it down to 58. Typically you don't want to stretch things beyond a minor third, uh, which is a space of three, or up, of course. Let's do 62 for now. And then we do pitch underscore key center equals 60. Finally, we can add volume information if desired. So we would do that with low velocity, like so. Once again, just LO. And uh, for here, this would be a louder sample. So we could do 60, and then high vel, or maybe we should make that 61, equals 127. So velocity, I'll just write this out, velocity can range 0 to 127. Meanwhile, and also, you know, pitch does as well. So you can have any key from 0 to 127.
And of course, if you want, you can actually enter actual pitch notation here. So you could do C4, in this case, B flat 4, I guess. Uh, but I'm just going to use numbers. It's a little bit clearer with uh, all the translations. So I can save that. And uh, let's say I want to import the other velocity layer, velocity 1. Well, that's pretty easy. I mean, we've already entered the gist of this information. So now I just need to make a new region, insert the information. And here I'll just change it so low val is 0 and high val is 60. And of course, uh, that should be V1 there. So we've imported two samples so far. Now let's see where we're at. So I'm going to go and boot up ARIA. Now you can use ARIA or Sforzando or any number of SFC playing tools. I'll just drag the flute in here. Let's take a listen. We have a bit of a flute going on there. So one thing that you'll run into now is worrying about the actual range of the instrument. So one thing we might want to do is make this so the lowest note is 60, for example, if the flute only goes down to C. Now we'd want to continue building up. So let's find the next note. So we have C, uh, here we go, E3. So now we can pretty much you know, make a template. This is kind of how I like to work. So here I've made kind of a template of what a region looks like. And now I can just duplicate it as needed. So now we want to do the E3. Make sure you get that extension in there as well. And you can copy this by hand if you really want. Uh, I would like to copy the actual text just to make sure I don't spell anything wrong. So what do we have here? Well, it's an E. And, uh, you know, if, if you're uncertain about this, you can find uh, charts online and such. So if you think, if you pull up a keyboard in front of you, if you think C is 60, then 61, 62, 63, 64. Okay, so this is, the pitch key center is 64. So we have to get five pieces of information, right, to list the sample. So there's one. So the lowest we can go, because so we don't want to overlap here, so the lowest we can go is 63. Oh, sorry, that should be the low key. My apologies. And we can leave the high key for now until we add the next note. Uh, and then we'll do the same sort of velocity thing here. So the quiet one will go zero to 60, and the louder one will go 61 to 127. And something we may want to add now is actually a slight volume modification. So you do, just do that by writing volume, and let's say we'll add 12 to the quiet notes, and uh, let's say 4 to the louder notes. So I can just go in here and Add 12, add 4. Now when I save this, I uh, ran into a little error here. And I said, ah, you didn't enter anything there. See, what happens is because SFC doesn't require an ending on every parameter, you know, typ typically in uh, a different language you would put, say, a semicolon or you'd, you'd, you know, if you're familiar with HTML, you'd have to go region at the end. You don't have to do that, which means you can't nest things, but it also means if you screw stuff up, some not-so-nice stuff can happen. So here we have to enter a high key. So for now, let's just add, follow our pattern. Let's just bring it up to 66. So now, what's nice about ARIA and Sforzando is it'll auto-update in here whenever you update the text file. So here it says we have four regions, a total of four samples, and it's listed it out. So we can actually play this now. So 
So what we want is a nice balance between the velocity layers. When you have a quiet layer, you want it to, as you slowly increase the velocity level, and you can do this by clicking on here. When you increase that, you want the transition to be as smooth as possible. So you can just play with the volumes over here until you get that result. Let's try to enter at least one more note. So here I still have my, I can, unfortunately I lost my template when I decided to copy and paste elsewhere. I normally save it on a separate tab or something, but no worries. The important thing is when you make sure that you uh, fill in all the values before saving or else Aria or Sforzando will freak out a little. And you know, essentially it's a compiler, you know, it, if, if you enter in information that it can't handle, then it, it has every right to freak out. So there's our template. Now we're into A3. So once again, what's A3? Well, here's 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69. So we know it's going to be 69. And it has to stretch down to 67. Oop, keep doing that. And the high key, well, let's see. Maybe we'll go up to um, 70. And then, of course, our low velocity sample goes 0 to 70. And this one goes 71 to 127. This one gets a boost of 24. This one gets a boost of 6. And now we just need to get our sample names. So here they are. That's V3. So, I've saved this. Go look. Oh, there it is. Unfortunately, I, I realized that you cannot hear what is going on here, and I was unable to fix that. Um, but <laughs> essentially, one of the issues they were facing is that there is no release. So a bop, 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 it's just cutting off very sharp like that. So what we can do to fix that is tell it that there's a release value. So, so far, we've kept just adding stuff to each of these regions and if we keep doing that and if it gets really big it's going to be really hard to do all that. So what we can do is we can actually we can actually add some global information that applies to all the regions. We do this through the global tag. And under global we can add amp eg attack equals 0 0.001 right you know what an ADSR is amp eg release equals 0 0.5 for example and this information that I put under global is applied to every region and if you wanted to override that then let's say under this region you wanted a different attack you can go amp eg attack equals 0 0.1. Let's say I want to control my different velocity layers independently. Well then I can start doing using something called groups. So a group is yet another layer. You have to think of this like nesting dolls. You know if, if you're familiar with code you can start thinking of it more like this. If you want to be super organized <laughs> But that's a good way to see the structure of this, right? That these are nested components within each other. So with the group, I can make each group, and I can give it a label here. Let's call this group lab label equals quiet. And uh, then I can make sure that only the quiet ones are in there. And then I can make another group 
and give it group label equals loud and make sure only the loud ones so then I can sort these out. So there I've, I've made two groups, one for quiet and one for loud. And the thing where groups really come in handy is when we have multi samples, otherwise known as round robin or random robin or random samples. Uh, so the way you go about this is under your group, you specify a low random, which is a float and high random, high rand equals another float. And this is the total possible range here between zero and one. So if I wanted these groups to alternate theoretically through a random cycle, then I'd put low rand, high rand. And then it would randomly select between the two groups. That's not a ra that's not a round robin. It's a random. Or I guess you I guess you can call it a random robin. Uh, although the terminology is a bit confusing. Otherwise, you have to give the groups an order, which is another opcode. You can look that up online. It's fairly easy to figure out how to use. Uh, but the other benefit of groups is we can add another layer of commands to our system. So this is all about keeping organized, keeping everything uh, in a place where we can find it, access it, because you have to remember in something like ARIA or Sforzando, you don't get the controls right at your fingertips. You have to go into the file and edit it. So that's why things like global are very handy. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this short little introduction to SFC. And I wish you the best of luck in creating your own SFC instruments based on the sample set. And have a great day.